Hi, everybody. This is Lyrita Barrett for the Institute for Global Transformation. Um, and our monthly meditation session where we have been talking about over the last number of months, uh, mental polarization, becoming mentally polarized. Um, and we'll continue that uh, a little bit and then do a meditation. So this lesson will be more hands-on, so to speak. It gives you a deeper understanding rather than the concepts of mental polarization or being mentally polarized. It gives you more of an, a deeper understanding of the practicality and how to become more mentally polarized. In order to become mentally polarized, we have to be able to examine our emotions. There is a saying that says, know thyself. And that is exactly what is being asked here. In order for us to be able to change and understand what needs to be changed, we have to know ourselves. We have to take the time to know ourselves. Um, so to be able to shift from an emotional polarization to a mental polarization, we need to know ourselves. How do we do that? First and foremost, that part of ourselves that is in most need of understanding is our emotional body. Also, I call it our astral body. It's also known as an astral body, our astral body. And specifically, we would also call them, and they're known as our response mechanism. It's how we respond in our world. It's how we're taught and programmed to respond in our world through our emotional body. Our emotional body, our astral body, really has a much higher purpose than simply responding, okay? Or acting out or reacting. Um, there's another purpose for it, but we'll get into that much later on. Um, feelings just don't come out of the blue, okay? They just don't happen. Really, we're taught them and we create them knowingly or unknowingly. And we do so through our experiences, okay? But originally, they come from our patterning after what it is we've seen as children what it is we have experienced. You know, children are great imitators. Children are absorbers. They're sponges. And we have a tendency to imitate. It's just the way we are. We're programmed to imitate that which we see. And who better to imitate but our guardians, our parents, parents, those who initially are our teachers. So when that parent or guardian gets upset about something that we've done, or if we just observe them getting upset in their life about something, it's stored in our memory bank and in our emotional body and we imitate. Children are the greatest imitators. When we do something and our 
parent or guardian reprimands us, scolds us, um, how that's done is extremely important because it's indicating to the child and programming, patterning them to do the exact same thing when that happens to them in their life. Um, and by seven years old, those patterns are set in their being. So here again, we are at choice as to what kind of messaging do we want and programming and patterning do we want to guide, to guide our children with, okay? Or those that we're raising. So, but this is how we learn. You know, if the reaction from the guardian or parent is gruff, um, angry, brash, violent, joyful, happy, loving, understanding, um, compassionate, all whatever it is that's coming at that child is going to be outpictured later on. So when they decide to have a tantrum about something and they've watched what you did or a parent has done uh, or that guardian has done, could be a grandmother in this day and age, um, automatically they will do the exact same thing. So how do we retrain ourselves is the question. We retrain ourselves through focus, attention, self-discipline, and patience. Okay. One thing that's known, uh, especially regarding the astral emotional body, is that we are not taught that we can choose, select our feelings, we, how we act, how we react. We're not taught that we are a choice. Many still believe we're not taught that we are at choice. You know, um, we, we just simply have that knee jerk reaction and think that that is the way things are supposed to be. And it doesn't help, tell you the truth, that the messaging continues in our entertainment world, in our movies, uh, the series that we watch on TV, Netflix, you name it. Um, we see it out pictured everywhere. So we believe that our ability to change is somewhat limited. We're programmed to believe that, and that's not true. That guardian who can see a child doing something and understands that their purpose is to train that child in that they have auspices over that child for a short period of time. And they take their responsibility very seriously. The quality of connection and understanding and approach to how one works with that child will be totally different than someone who does not bring that level of consciousness to their connection, to the connection with their children or those that they are responsible for. That guardian then who can 
see a child do, doing something and can approach them in a way that the child begins to understand when we do this, this is what happens. This is the outcome. Uh, or these are the variety of outcomes that one can have. And what is the goal? Whatever it might be, you know. Um, perfect example. Phone rings. And starts, a young child picks up the phone and starts immediately um, yelling into the phone. Doesn't understand modulation of the voice. Doesn't understand to speak necessarily coherently. Uh, take your time. So that parent is responsible for then saying, okay, we have another human being in our household. Let me teach this child how to phone etiquette. What is the purpose of answering the phone? Someone wants to communicate with us. So let's make sure that they understand this. Let's make sure that we understand a modulation of voice. Let's make sure that we don't hurt their ears by screaming into the phone. Let's make sure tone, quality, uh, carrying the message to the person that the phone call made before is important. So by doing that in a way that the child really gets it, and maybe later on teaching them as they get older, true phone etiquette, depending on the age, of course. Um, now you have a responsible human being within the home, the space that knows exactly what to do. And will carry that same lesson onwards to their children later on when they see it. But it's been it's been the, the the message has been carried out in a loving way, an understanding way, a way that they the child can accept that they are a part of that family, a necessary part of that family, um, carrying out a responsibility for the family. Um, that that's a healing, loving. Uh, compassionate and understanding way of working with a child as opposed to what it could other, otherwise look like, okay? All of us at a given time in our experiences of life want to improve ourselves. We all want to shift. That sh desire to shift moves us off the path of experience and onto what's called the path of evolution, where there is self-initiated action, self-initiated exploration of spirituality one becomes a seeker which is why we have so many self-help books in the bookstores or online you know amazon self-help book self-help books have just kind of blown off the charts um since the i think 60s 70s late 60s 70s so this is a part of humanity en masse seeking to move from that path of experience into path of, ex of, of evolution. And the interesting thing about that is that that call to seek to be more than we are is really initiated by the soul. We think it's the persona. It looks like it's the persona, but it's really a soul's call to the persona to begin to move in a different way, begin to investigate new things, um, begin to 
find out who you really are and what your purpose is here. So that's a soul's call. And we do all of this, all of these changes, all of these shifts through, as I said, a self-initiated action and activity and through desire, will, and self-discipline. It is an act of will, really, on all those fronts. Um, yeah, soul calling through, knocking on the door of the persona and saying, it's time to wake up. We come to realize that everything is energy and everything is divine energy. And that the same energy we use in anger and love or rather the same energy we use in anger is the same energy we use in love. The same energy used in depression is the same energy that can be used in happiness. It's really about the patterns that we create, the patterning that begins early on in one's lifetime. And how one chooses to use their energy or selects to use their energy or thinks it's the only way to use their energy, okay? Um, so we have to unlearn and relearn um, unwind and rewind, so to speak, in order to learn and grow and shift and move from that emotional polarization into a mental polarization. Happiness is defined as a general feeling made up of many little responses to life. We create happiness within ourselves It's not something that we can find outside of ourselves. That's the key. Joy is not something we can find outside of us. Happiness, joy, um, these things are found within. Everything that really we need, we find within ourselves. We might see examples of it outside of ourselves. It's not something that we can align ourselves with someone who is happy and joyful in order for us to be able to experience it. People do that, of course, they try it. But usually, once out of the auric field of that person, we come back to ourselves. Wherever we are, whatever we are, there we are, you know, that's it. Um, happiness, joy is something that inherently we have to find within ourselves. Okay. One is inherently joyful. One is inherently happy. And if one has a difficult time finding that space inherently, then meditation and self-exploration will help. There will, will definitely help. Meditation will take you and help you um, I'm going to say, I'm going to add one more, meditation, self-exploration, and transmutation exercises will help. 
because that transmutation meditation exercises will help slough off. It's like peeling the skin of an onion. It's like taking off layers of dead skin, uh, layers that really don't belong there, layers that might not be you at all, layers that may inherently just be there because it's a programmation from some other relationship or thought form that once created about themselves. That's maybe not true at all, okay? Um, low self-esteem, something like that, you know? Um, there are many different things that can, you know, maybe you were told, maybe someone was told that they are something that in actuality, they're really not. So sitting with oneself, meditating, and transmutation meditations can actually, Ho'oponopono, lovely one, by the way, if you've never heard of the Ho'oponopono, investigate it. Very, very powerful, simple Hawaiian prayer, okay, for healing not only what's going on in one's life, well, primarily what's going on in one's life, and all those that were attached to the occurrence of pain, suffering, trauma. It peels off the layers like taking the skin off an onion so you get down to what is really you. Free from fear, free from guilt, free, free, freer. And therein you can find that sense of joy. Happiness, as I was talking about before, is made up of an assortment of things like understanding, love, kindness, goodwill to others, faith, a willingness as well as a willingness to accept what cannot be changed and the ability to adapt, okay? All of that are aspects of this thing we call happiness. Looking to the near future this year, There's a lot going on. It's not a, it's not an easy year by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and yet, at the same time, it's a very powerful year. Um, it's the year in Chinese astrology of the black water tiger. So there will be, and the last time we had, um, the Blackwater Tiger year, I think was in 1962. It was a period of time when we went through the Cuban Missile Crisis. And look what's loomed on the horizon. Okay. Um, Russia, Ukraine. Uh, and a lot of revolutionary movement that's going on throughout the entire world. Um, that many news channels are not talking about, okay? Um, so this year will be um, a bumpy year in, in many aspects. And I bring it up because as I'm speaking about happiness, we have to find, we have to be able to find our center our place of poise, our steadfast place, a place where we can hold to the center regardless of what it is we're seeing out pictured in the world, okay? There has to be those conscious workers in the world who are holding steady to that center 
that center core, that place where we know, that middle pillar, so to speak. We talk about that in Kabbalah, the middle pillar. Um, regardless of how the state of flux that's going on in the world around us, if that we hold a steady core, if there's a percentage of people, light workers in the world, who are holding to that steady core, that will emanate, that will radiate, that will cause a shift. So we have to be able to find that place, that place of happiness, uh, that place of resilience, that place of uh, the ability to walk in uncertain times, the ability to be stable in uncertain times. So if you experience someone doing something to you, if you experience something that you would consider negative, what do you do? First, I recommend pause immediately. You know, people say count to 10. Yeah, pause. Take a moment. No need for a knee-jerk reaction. Absolutely not. Take a moment, breathe in and out a few deep breaths. No one has to know what you're doing. And as you do that, examine what's really going on here. It gives you that moment of poise to be able to see into that person who's standing in front of you or who's on the phone with you or Take a moment, just check it out. Breathe, pause, count. And as you examine what's going on, you it gives you it gives you the ability many times to be able to see this action really isn't directed to me at all. This might be some confusion that occurred earlier in the day to this person or something that happened between them and their partner a couple days ago and they're still carrying or their child might be ill there's so many variables that happen in someone's life and when someone does not have control over their response mechanism that energy spews everywhere. They don't know, they have no control. It's just directed at anything and everyone, okay? So, we aid each other. We aid each other when we can pause in a moment of, from a moment of reactivity to assess what's really going on and to decide what's right action in this moment. What does this person really need? It might be a hug. It might be a listening ear. It might be you fill in the blank, okay? Um, I've often heard in a moment like that, ask the question, what would the Christ do? What would the Christ think? How would the Christ act? Well, what would the Christ say? and then do that, okay? Or the Buddha, whatever, fill in the blank. Ask yourself, will your reaction, whatever comes up, help or hinder this person? 
will it heal or will it hurt? Um, will it cause harm? And we don't want to cause harm, regardless of what's coming at you, regardless. Okay. And we have to always remember, remember I always say, there is no other, you know? So that person that's there in front of you or whoever is on that phone or Zoom call or whatever, it is an aspect of yourself. So pause, take a moment, find out what's really going on and ask what's right action in this moment. So what we're working to do is to retrain our physical, our response mechanism. Um, so that it's coming from a place of understanding, of harmlessness, of a healing, of compassion, of empathy. In order to do that, how best does one do that? As we said in the very beginning, know thyself. Yes. It helps to, if one really wants to do this in a, in a way that is um, somewhat analytical, I'm going to say, it helps to write down in a space of a, maybe a week positive reactions, negative reactions and the circumstance that caused it. And list them. That's an aspect of really knowing oneself. One of the occult writers that um, I highly respect um, said do that over I, i'm and i know this is way more than more most people would want to do but uh, i'm just putting it out there so that uh, you can see how in depth past students of these studies have been do it over a 28 day cycle a lunar cycle okay which means you have your calendar and you write in this tap this this you know or you may be your list and you your journal and you write down 28 day cycle a lunar cycle is really a period of time where you can assess what your own personal cycles and what can happen in a month a month's period of time i'm not saying to do that but it's just uh, information to have. It requires one, this requires one to stay present in the moment, to be able to assess and to feel by being present moment to moment, one is open to, f to sense what's coming at you. Okay, um, a little bit more difficult it is to do that when one is worrying about the future or feeling guilt about the past, okay, or, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's it, one needs to be present in, in the present, moment to moment, in the now, and then you're, you're keyed in, so to speak. You're aware, you're conscious. Something is coming at you. You can feel the approach before it hits you, you know? Um, you're sure-footed, a little bit more sure-footed than you are um, 
when your mind is in a number of different places, other places. So make a list, you know, try it for a week, three days, whatever, see what comes up and you'll have a better snapshot of what's going on within you and how you can work to shift that. Because you, once you're listing positive and negative, you know, you can see where you are. You can see where you are in, on both scales and what really needs to be worked on. That's knowing thyself. Um, and moving you from that emotional polarization into more of a mental polarization, bit by bit, drip by drip. So let's take a moment and meditate. Take a deep breath. Release it. And relax the physical body. Send a message to your nervous system, telling it to relax and know that it will obey. Take a second deep breath. And as you release it, relax your emotional body. Calm the emotional body. See it as a pool of water. And calm the waves of that water. Take a third deep breath and alert and awaken the mind. Move your awareness out through the forehead about two to three inches. Into the etheric body. You know that here you connect with humanity itself other light workers and join now with the light workers of the world who are also in meditation at the same time. To the direction of your thought. Connect with your higher self. And sound a silent own.
Move your awareness back into the center of the head. Through the forehead, between the brows, back into the center of the head, about two inches behind the eyes. See a line of light that moves vertically upward. Know that here in the center of the head, you connect with the group soul. of humanity. And your own soul as a part of that group soul. Looking upward and observing that vertical line of light that goes up through the head, out beyond the top of the head to the head center. The crown chakra. the highest of the persona centers. That sits beneath the home plane of the soul itself. receptive to the downflow from the higher center. Always remembering that you are a group. You are part of the world group. Working on behalf of all of humanity. In these times. Here you are open to the blueprint of your life. The blueprint of the true purpose of your life. The ideal. Here you become aware of your true service
your true work. The soul's call. Take a moment and connect with the true idea and ideal of your work and purpose here within humanity. How can you best serve humanity? Within the group consciousness, And from within the center of that inner cave, the space behind the eyes, the center of the head, looking outward through the forehead, between the brows, Radiate this energy, this essence, this frequency of meditation outward by projecting it through the brows out into the etheric field. See it as light, direct it as light. Radiated outward to friends and family. Radiated outward to your environment. And together we sound and own. Oh. And lastly, send the energy back up. Imagine a triangle around your head, 
and back up above your head, right above the center of your head and allow the energy to move back down along that vertical line of light. So there's a triangulation that goes on. So all energy used is returned back to source and back down. And so it is in divine law and order. Okay, I thank everyone who is listening, who takes the time on a monthly basis to, um, to listen to this particular space of Global Meditation with Lyrida. I appreciate all of you and uh, thank you very much for your energy and look forward to future sessions. This on behalf of the Institute for Global Transformation, um, I really appreciate their time and allowing me this slot um, to be able to reach out to all of you giving thanks. Have a great day and great days ahead. Learning more about yourself. Take good care. <laughs>